Hello, welcome to Garden Chronicles. My name is James David and in today's video, I would like to share a little bit more on my chili pepper plants which I have cultivated in my garden. So sit back and enjoy my plant review here. Just a quick introduction, this particular one is very much of an ornamental type, commonly known as the yellow tabasco. It is not very popular or widely cultivated due to the low impact on the spicy factor. However, in my opinion and experience, normally I will use it where I will trim this particular pepper and place them in vinegar and use it as a vinegar pepper. Often, I will use it as a culinary accompaniment dish when serving soya sauce dishes. Coming to the plant care, here I want to mention that this is actually one single plant which I have been keeping almost for about two years now. Initially, I had many failures on, on the factor of trial and error and I would really like to share on the success rate of how you can actually successfully cultivate a chili pepper plant. I must say the rule number one is to plant them in direct hot sun. That means to say that if you were to look up, there must be a sun shining on top of it without any canopy or sh bright shaded area. In a case, there may be some special cases where they can be cultivated in shaded areas. However, in my condition, it requires bright hot sun area. Once that has been established, everything else falls very easy. The basic factor of watering and feeding appears to be very much on a regular factor, just like any other common plants. Now, coming back to challenges, one of the biggest problems that I actually face is pest problems. Almost monthly, I have to keep an eye on it where scale insect, mealybugs and usually ants seems to come and farm upon this particular chili plant and causing a lot of problem for this particular plant to survive. You must understand the biggest problem here is stress. Once the plants start to face stress, they tend to turn out to be a little bit more mature looking and tend to drop their production on the fruiting. Often also due to stress, the leaves tend to drop and turn yellow. So in this case, normally I will do a weekly application of organic pesticide just to control this particular pest from further damaging the plants. Once doing that, another strong application of foliar fertilizer somehow jumpstart the plant within two to three weeks time. Do take note to use organic pesticide which is of a high quality as these are edibles. Now these are the few tips that I would like to share concerning how I care for them. Normally I will not allow this particular yellow tabasco chili peppers to turn red. In a way if I were to do so, I will actually use it for seedlings. This is what I've noticed that once most of this particular one turns red, they stop producing fruits. Again, I would consider that it's a little bit strange because the plant somehow identified itself that it has enough producing red chilies and it stopped producing the yellow ones. So constantly trimming and taking off the chilies seems to make them bloom more and produce more chilies. Like most plants, once they have finished their maturity stage, they tend to die away. So in a way, in my context, is to prolong as long as possible. Now I've actually covered on the lighting, the watering, the feeding and the pests. When it comes to propagation, I find that using cutting seems to be very challenging and finicky. The one of the best ways to do is actually to use the seeds. Of course, it will take some time. And of course, another factor of chances where not many will actually survive. The first part of challenge is basically the root rot or in fact the infection that actually takes place is the fungus problem on the roots. So handling a proper sterile and strong good soil mix actually goes a long way for this chili plant. Once that has been established, I think I believe that this particular plant is a hardy plant that can go over for many years. 
Also do note that when it comes to these types of chili, only the fully ripened ones are viable for seedlings. So do not use the yellow ones or even the unripe ones. Preferably use the matured and almost the dried ones for seedlings. I also noticed that there are not many pollinators that comes into these flowers and I believe that these are very much self-pollinating plants so there's not much of worry that you have to concern about if they are considered sterile as not bearing fruits. Above all, I really want to make a very strong emphasis when harvesting these chilies is to use a clean sterile scissors when cutting them. Do not pinch them with using your fingers as this can highly damage the plant. In some cases, a gardener may absent-mindedly cut and prune rotting and damaged plant material and accidentally use the same tool infecting the healthy plant. And that would be a telltale sign of rots and infection taking place, especially fungus and stress factor appearing on the parent plant. With all that has been said, this is actually my weekly harvest that actually takes place. This is how I actually harvest them, just taking them by trimming them using a sterile scissors. As for storage, they can last for a few months. What I will do here is I will actually store it, use putting them in a freezer and use it for cooking whenever I, it is when it's needed. I also want to mention that I do have wildlife here where often squirrels, bats, civets, shrew, tree shrew and rats, rodents and even monkeys. So in a way I find that when it comes to chili peppers, these creatures keep away from this particular type of plants from consuming them. Once I have managed to get this particular plant successful, I have started to try and experiment on a different types of chili peppers. This particular one is the purple type which is very much on the upright miniature version. Uh, however, it is not very spicy, very much similar like the yellow tabasco. One of the good factors about it is they can do very well in tight constrained spaces as they don't really need a lot of space for them to be cultivated. Another factor that I find that this particular purple one do not have much infestation or pest problem in comparison to yellow tabasco. However, they do require good feeding as the fruits can turn to be very tiny when lack of nutrients. Other than that, the care and cultivation is very much similar like any common chili plants where the watering, lighting and feeding is very much similar. Finally, I would like to share about this particular plant known as Bishop Crown Chili which I find is quite interesting due to their features. I have been actually harvesting them when they are actually in this color. I know that they actually can turn more into red. However, I find that it appears to be in this form for some time. It appears to be more like a bell pepper and I find that it is much more stronger and durable in hardy context in comparison to Tabasco and the purple type. I have now come to the end of my video. I would truly appreciate if you can click like, subscribe and put your comments on my channel. If you have any questions, do put them in a comment and I'll try my best as possible based on my experience and opinion. Until then, catch you in my next video. Take care and have a nice day. Bye.